Reed, who suffered a severely sprained ankle on Friday against the Texas Longhorns with 15.52 to go in the second half of play. He did not return to the game, although x-rays proved to be negative. He's been receiving around-the-clock treatment. And for an update on his status, let's check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Gus, we just got word that Dewan Wheat is starting. The Louisville staff watched him in the shoot-around and in the warm-ups. He was running and he was jumping. And just a few minutes ago, he told Coach Denny Crum that he did feel like he was able to play. Team doctor, Dr. Rudy Ellis, told me that they are concerned about his lateral movement, but he also said that he is amazed at the remarkable improvement that he has seen in the last 43 hours. We'll see how he does this afternoon. Gus? All right, Andrea, I'm joined by my partner, Quint Buckner. Dewan Wheat in the lineup. That's big for Louisville. Well, I think it helps some. I think you can get started, and he'll play a little bit. But his lateral movement will be affected, make no doubt about it. B.J. Flynn is going to have to get extended minutes. You don't know how he's going to react under those circumstances. And the other guy that's got to play big is Alvin Sim. 25 points, a career high. This is a guy that's got to give them the offensive punch that they need in the game in order for Louisville to have some success. And success, that's been the word for North Carolina. They're coming off a victory over California, and the two guys that's really been leading them, Antoine Jamison, Eddie Cota. Jamison, the guy in the middle, he's a spectacular-looking sophomore. Jamison is a guy I like because he has great quickness, explosion, and he's elusive. He's a guy that you can take a look at right here. He's in the back of the defense, and the defense has got to be aware of him when you're the Cardinal. Somehow they lose him, but watch this. He gets to the basket and explodes. He gets there quickly. That's what Carolina is going to try to use, that inside game, and uh, Antoine Jamison in particular. 21 points, 8 rebounds for Jamison against Cal. Coming up, the East Regional Final. The winner to take a trip to Indianapolis and the Final Four. Starting lineups coming up next. Regional final, North Carolina and Louisville. And it's been over a decade since these two teams have faced each other on the floor. Coming up next, one of these guys will be heading to Indianapolis and the Final Four. People and welcome back to Syracuse. Gus Johnson, Quinn Buckner, Andrea Joyce with you for the East Regional Final. And the head coach for the Cardinals, Denny Crum, in his 26th season. He's got in Louisville to six Final Fours, the last in 1986, and his starting lineup. They've used the same starting lineup the entire season. Dewan Wheat will be in the starting lineup, making his 136th straight start. That's a record. And for North Carolina, the legend, Dean Smith, 36 seasons in Chapel Hill, the all-time winning as coach in NCAA history. He's led 10 teams to the Final Four. And his start, starting lineup, Oak Elijah, Jamison Zwicker, Shaman Williams, and Vince Carter. And your officials, Curtis Shaw, John Cowell, and Stan Reynolds. These two teams have met seven times. Carolina with a 4-2 advantage. Dean Smith, 4-1 against Denny Crum. And Quinn, as these two teams take the floor right now, what's going through their minds with the possibility of going to the Final Four? There, there are some anxious moments. I'm starting to get a little anxious myself. It's like getting prepared to play again, even though these guys think they have a feel for what's at stake. When, what they have to be able to do is you, you have to balance your emotions. So initially, it's going to be like a boxing match. You want, you got to figure out what they're doing, and the coaches will be doing the same thing. The real question is, how long can Juan Wheat uphold under this pressure? So we're underway from Syracuse. Tip controlled by the Cardinals inside. Dantzler, nice bounce pass. Up and in, and Louisville. They get out on the board first. Nate Johnson, the freshman from Camden, New Jersey. And Jamal Williams quickly answering. He did it on Dewan Wheat. What you would like to see him testing is off the drive, but he came up on the jump shot because Shaman is a very good jump shooter. Shaman set a single-season record for threes with four against California, breaking Kenny Smith and Donald Williams' record. 91 total this season. 
Here's Alexander, and he comes out with the hot hand. Well, you see, what Louisville really would like to do here is just keep it close in the first half, and then they can make some adjustments in the second half. They will probably start to run, because that's when they compete at their best, when they're active. Almost a steal, and it is. Sims getting a hand on it. Here's Wheat. Nice look. Johnson inside Sanders. Sims on the baseline. Got it off. Short. Tipped out to Wheat. And teams that shoot badly, one of the things they usually do, if they can get this far, is pretty good offensive rebounding team, just like Lord. And Wheat looks pretty good on that ankle throw. Yeah, but he hadn't had to force himself to get anywhere. And Shimon Williams, I think, needs to put more pressure on him to force him to have to move laterally. Johnson spotting up in the corner. Fires up an air ball. Out of bounds. will stay right here. And for North Carolina, in the first round, they beat Fairfield, then Colorado, and a trail by as many as seven against California, but came back to win. 21 points, eight rebounds for Antoine Jameson in that game. Here comes the Tar Heels in transition. Nice finger roll. Adi Mola over Elijah. Wheat was trying to make a pass, and I'm, I'm paying particular attention on, on Wheat because when he tried to make the pass, he did it because he couldn't spring up and get a shot. He was open momentarily, turned it over. Wheat has been suffering with all kinds of injuries during postseason play. Bursitis in his shoulder, calf injury, now the ankle. Ten on the shot clock now. He'll take the jump shot, partially blocked. But he buries it. He, he had to travel to get there, but it's got to even be emotional lift for his team to see him make the shot. Just his a first Herculean effort by Dewan Wheat to get out on the floor despite all the pain and get out there and contribute for this Louisville team. Well, you've got to worry about the lateral movement. Watch how gingerly Wheat starts moving. And he'll travel trying to make sure he takes the pressure off his foot. Watch. See how he had to take the extra step? So he's, he's concerned about it, but he was able to get it up over the top of Zwicker for that shot. We going out of the game against Texas with 15, 52 to go in the second half. They feed the post. Dantzler inside, up and in. They're, they're going to go at Zwicker because they think they have the quickness with the forwards and the center. They don't have the overall size, so you go with quickness. So Louisville jumping out to a 10-5 lead. Here's Williams around the screen. Let it go off the front of the rim. Cleared by Sims. Cardinals trying to run. Sims inside. Wheels up. And a little too much. Got to the basket. You got to finish that one. Bob to head to Carter. Did a nice job gathering himself. And he'll get the tip in. Yeah, he got the tip in because Wheat didn't stop him the first time. and couldn't block him out because he doesn't want anybody else's weight on his ankle because he just doesn't have the strength. Carter's averaging 12 points. There's Wheat again. Off the back of the iron. Jamison with the rebound. Carter behind the three-point line. You know, this is the guy, I think, frankly, that's been playing with the most confidence in the last couple of days, Vince Carter. He's got five points, but he's shooting it with confidence. He had the slight growing pull. Doesn't seem to have bothered him. He's been averaging 12 points in the NCAA. And we get a foul inside. And for the Cardinals, this is how they entered the regional final with wins over UMass, New Mexico, and also Texas. They held the Longhorns to 28% shooting in the second half on Friday. Reggie Freeman, 2 of 14, a season-low six points. They reverse it, Sanders. Rebound, Nate Johnson short arms it. Got a great opportunity there. They've got to get those in, but here is the matchup that I think is going to be most difficult. Coda's in the game with the quickness to go against Wheat. Wicker, rebound, and the basket will not count. Traveling violation against the Tar Heels. 15-51 to go. We've got a ball game so far. It's tied at 10 strength you do what you need to do this is Dewan Wheat and watch what happens as he goes here defensively he really can't get back limping a little bit now Carter will make the pass over and there'll be a rebound now watch Wheat at the bottom see he makes no effort to get in front of Vince Carter to cut him off that allows the putback normally he would have just naturally done it his instincts are protecting that anchor and here comes some full court pressure right now by North Carolina to get it ahead Johnson inside deep and he's fouled going to the bucket 
Well, that's the thing to do when you get a defense like that. You must attack it. Swicker's at the back end of it. And he's not as lateral, and not good as lateral as these uh, uh, Louisville players are. All of these guys can move left, right, in the air. And if you do that defensively, you will get called for the foul. So Nate Johnson stepping to the free throw line. Louisville really shooting free throws well. Johnson, the freshman from Camden, New Jersey, rookie of the year in Conference USA, 72% free throw shooter on the season. Averaging close to 13 points per game in the NCAA. Well, he, he's capable of having 20-plus uh, games. He had 21 against UMass. He's got four. Full court pressure now, and a turnover for the Cardinals. Sanders, fourth turnover for North Carolina. Cardinals leading by two. 15-32 to go here in the first half of play. And Wheaton loses it. Carter got on the floor, but he threw it out of bounds. Yeah, he was on the floor trying to make a play. I'm not sure why he wouldn't throw it to his basket, but we can't make an effort. He just loses it and has a tough time going down. Carter gets it and tries to throw it to Eddie Cota, who is going for a fast break. The ball comes right at you. They want to reset of the 35 second clock is what the holdup was because Carter had control of the ball or possession or possession change is why you get a new reset get a reset. Here's Alvin Sims at the career high 25 points against Texas. They've gone to a 2-3 zone trying to force some jump shots keeping the man very close to weak. Here's Sims. That's the player they see in practice all the time and have been wondering where it is when Alvin Sims shoots jump shots like that. Point lead now for the Cardinals. And Denny Crum, very candid earlier this week. <laughs> His team, a puzzle to him. He said he can't understand them. They can't shoot. They can't rebound. They can't pass. But somehow they figure out how to win games. Right now, they're three of four from the three point line. Because they do the one thing that you have to do, and that's compete. That's the reason they win games. Eddie Cota trying to feed it inside. Loose ball on the floor. Zwicker picked it up, forced it at the basket. Here's Jamison up and in. Carolina getting the best of offensive rebounding that time, but that's all Louisville wants to do is to keep it live. They think they can get to it quicker than the car, the car here. Chancellor. He's coming off a 17-point game against Texas. Hit two threes. Prior to that, he was two of 19 from the three-point line all season. <laughs> Coach, Coach Crum had told him, don't shoot that three-point shot. You don't look like shooting it. And he shot it in and made two big threes for the Cardinals. You've got to be able to, to think your way through this game. And I think one of the things you can do is take advantage of your skills. Jamerson, number 33, watch him. He's active. He goes from one side of the basket to the other. Nice little soft touch. Around the basket is where he's most effective with very soft hands. Along with Billy Cunningham, Antoine Jamison, the first one of two Tar Heels to grab 600 rebounds and score 1,000 points in his first two years. He's also the last Tar Heel to get a consecutive ACC uh, all-tournament, I mean all-conference, since Brad Doherty. And a whistle. Substitutions coming in the game now. Maktar Jai will replace Serge Zwicker. Jai, the transfer from the University of Michigan, began his career at Wake Forest. It's a little bit more active team for Carolina when you've got Jai instead of Zwicker. And a blocking foul. Talking about Maktar Jai, enrolled at Wake Forest, never actually played for him, transferred to Michigan. Williams and Jamison makes the grab. The problem that they'll have to deal with, and he's changing it. Bozak was getting caught on Jamison. It's Carter. Off of Wheat. Wheat got went for the ball fake to the outside, and there's nothing he can do trying to change directions. That's the lateral motion we're talking about. Vince Carter, 5 of 10 from the field against California. He had 14 points, 7 now. Eric Johnson popping out with the basketball. One point lead for Louisville. 13 27 to go here in the first half of play. Well, we got to shoot that. Comes up short. Williams snatches it down. And here's Coda. Cut off nicely by Dewan Wee. Good movement there, but he went to the left. 
Carter couldn't get a handle on it. Sam's the other oh, way. Oh. Left hand, and he's fouled. Boy, he's just coming. He has been very aggressive with the ball. One of the things as I talked to the coaching staff about it, Sam, they said today was because they were pretty sure that Wheat was not going to get a lot of minutes. Alvin Sims is a lot more comfortable and feels like he can go and be aggressive at the basket without offending their star, Dewan Wheat. That time he just misses with the left hand with a good take in traffic. So Alvin Sims, the Defensive Player of the Year in Conference USA, not only did he have the career high, 25 points, but his responsibility was to guard Reggie Freeman on Friday, held Freeman at 2 of 14 and a season low six points you know guess why I thought he was most active was he didn't let Freeman get the ball in position where he can do things Freeman has that long reach and if he gets around you he can take the ball and move it and he never was able to do that with Sim comes up short way short on the second free throw and there's Dewan Wheat standing up on the bench as opposed to sitting down yeah. don't want that ankle to stiffen up on him Court pressure, Jameson, get it over the line. Sims trying to come up with a steal. Looking at Jai, and he'll go to the line. First of all, that's a, that was a great pass to be in traffic right there that Okalaja makes to be able to throw it behind the defense's back. I'm sure Dean Smith and stated to his right is Coach Guthrie, cut, ooh, Guthridge. <laughs> but what you like is when your big people can make passes on the interior. So Maktar Jai misses the first free throw from Dakar, Senegal. Said he left the University of Michigan because it was too cold. <laughs> Wanted to come to a warmer climate. He said, I'm from West Africa. I need a little sun while I pursue my education. So B.J. Flynn now in the game for Louisville. Here's Sims. Johnson rising. And Jai with the rebound, and he is fouled. A good tough rebound there by Jai. Johnson took a shot under pressure. Carolina coach Dean Smith he has some international flavor on Tar Heels Jai one of four foreign exchange students with Elijah from Berlin Wicker from the Netherlands and Vasco Eftimal from Bulgaria as you know, the international game and the game from the U.S. is becoming closer together, so we can get them going. But that's one of the guys that they want to get going offensively, Shaman Williams. Started at point guard, when Ed Cota comes in, Shaman goes back to a much more comfortable position where he shoots the basketball. Carolina on an 8-0 run. Williams has hit a three in the last 25 straight games, making 26 now. That one was a two. Here's Flynn. Pass inside, and it's out of bounds. 11.51 to go. North Carolina up by three. Back in Syracuse, these are interesting times. Louisville coach Denny Crum has flown a neuroscientist into Syracuse to strengthen his players' mental game. Steve Halliday actually worked with Alvin Sims and Damian Dantzler last week before they came to Syracuse. And look how their numbers improved in the regional finals against Texas. Sims told me Halliday helped him visualize how well he's played in the past and restored his confidence. Now, with that success, Denny Crum had Halliday come to Syracuse yesterday. And as you might expect, Gus, there were a lot of players anxious to speak to the guy they now call the shot doc. I hear you. Meanwhile, a steal. Williams straight to the basket, hanging in the air. He will head to the free throw line. The last shot prior to this one by Williams was credited as a three-point basket for Shimon. And Quinn, nowadays you see this a lot in sports. Why so many, uh, this guy, a, a neural scientist, uh, that, that, why do you see that so much now? Because that's it's kind of a takeoff of the approach of the sports psychologist scenario where there are people who they believe if they see themselves succeed that there's a better chance to have some success and i'm sure that's what denny crumb wanted out of his team 
or, or those particular individuals. And you see it because the mental aspect of the game, particularly now, where you're playing against such good team, everybody's about the same in the talent for the most part, the mental is what gets you over. So that's why you see it more. So a 10 0 run right now for North Carolina. They lead it by five. 11 39 to go here in the first half of play. And because the interesting thing about the, the run was it started to happen shortly after uh, Dewan Wheat went out of the game. So th they did not do a good job of going to other people and getting some score. Louisville, they missed their last five shots. Cola almost broke BJ Flynn's ankle. 12 0 run now for the Tar Heels. 22-15. Wheat and Damian Dantzler ready to check back into the basketball game. And so far in the tournament, in the first half, Louisville, they've been shooting about 37%. Here's Nate Johnson, and he'll get the roll. Well, that's only the second basket they've gotten inside. I mean, they started the game and got one, and until that one, they really hadn't done anything inside. They want to hold it close until the second half, where during the NCAA, they've been shooting 51% in the second half of play. Now, Texas defensively to 28% on Friday. You know, some of that is due, quite frankly, with, with no deference to any of the other people who have been coaching, because I, that's not what I'm saying here. The coaching staff on both sides, you got two Hall of Fame coaches here, and their strengths are making those adjustments at halftime, and that's why both of them seem to, seem to play better after half because adjustments are made. Don't forget, coming up next, Providence and Arizona at 5 o'clock from Birmingham. Carter all alone. We're switching, but in Birmingham, going back to Arizona and Providence, Arizona shot the world. They brought Kansas to their knees. Ten points now for Vince Carter. North Carolina backcourt outscoring Louisville. And Sanders hits the three, 19-6. North Carolina will live with Sanders shooting jump shots. At 17 points against Texas, Williams again. He shot too strong, Sanders with the ball. Four-point lead for the Tar Heels. Weak back in the game. Sanders thinking about it. He'll fire. Carter with the backside rebound. I think Sanders has got to make Swicker come to him so he put the ball on the floor. Cota spinning inside, and he walks. If you do a good job setting screens, you're normally the person that gets open, and you'll see, you'll see that happen. Just watch right here. Sets the screen and then just steps back to Sanders because the defense has to help out, particularly when the pick is set and the cutter goes to the basket. A lot of incentive for Sanders playing today. He went to Oak Hill Academy in Mouth of Wilson, Virginia. Played high school ball with Jerry Stackhouse and Jeff McGinnis, also Mac Jai. Yeah, he, there were a lot of good players. He uh, made a decision that he wanted to play for Denny Crum at Louisville because he thought the game was more physical at Louisville, and he plays more of that style of play. Twenty-four, twenty, under ten to go. With Jameson swinging it. Coda, top of the key. Fifteen on the shot clock. He tries to rifle it inside, but DeJuan Wheat got a hand on it. Alvin Sims checks back into the game. Both coaches doing a good job, I think, in substitution, keeping fresh bodies out here. Because you asked me about it earlier, about how do you feel? Well, emotionally, when you get psyched up for a game, sometimes it's tough to get your second win. Both coaches running players in and out, assuring that that second win does come. Baseline's wicker, and he really has gotten good hitting that baseline jump shot. Oh, the other way, take. Sims inside, left hand and in. He came to a good jump stop, but he was able to split the defense and get where he needed to go. Five first half points for Alvin Sims. Louisville wants to keep it close. In the first half, they feel that they can win the game if it's close when the second half begins. They trail by four now, 8.41 to play in the first half. Defensively, Louisville, Louisville likes to play man-to-man. -man. They do a lot of switching because they have guys of like size. You've got to guard Okolaja. He can make three-point shots. He's a great player to have on your team, Gus, because he doesn't need any offense run for him, but he can steal. When he gets the open shot, he can make it. Carolina 4-5 from the three-point line. 
Sims, pick and roll, picked up his dribble. And a jump ball. Carolina will get it on the possession arrow. I mean, this is really kind of a careless turnover here because you've got to be strong with it. You said, see, again, Okalaja gets his hand on it. Sims has nowhere to go. You put the ball over your head defensively. If you get a hand anywhere near that top range, there's nowhere for you to go. Back Bob. door, Carter. Tipped up, Carter over the back, out of bounds. And Louisville will get the basketball. Seven minutes. 59 seconds to go here in Syracuse, North Carolina, 29-22 lead. Seven fifty-nine to go, 29-22 Carolina. It's Carter hustling on the offensive boards, upset with himself. Here come the Cardinals, two on one. Nice look, Sanders has pounded it down with the left hand. He makes the play because Alvin Sims has faked Zwicker twice by going to the left and having come on the left on the fast break, Zwicker thought he was going to go for it again. That's why the pass led to the basket. Eight points now for Sanders. 29-24. Okalaja guarded by Wheat. Wheat moving laterally. Still looks solid on that gimpy ankle. He is in no hurry to get anywhere, and he just doesn't want anybody that tries to beat him off the dribble. Coda. Ball oh. short. Rebounded by Dantzler. Here's Sims again, pushing the tempo. A look inside, knocked out of bounds by Okalaja. Sims is the guy that has to be aggressive. Watch, he goes to his left, and Schwicker just doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. He steps up, and Alex Sanders gets the finish because Schwicker stepped out to get Sims. So far for Louisville, they have 11 fast break points on 12 attempts. They, they will get out and run, and there's no doubt about it. That's the one thing that they are going to need to do because it's hard to get by Schwicker. Dantzler wheeling inside. Had it stripped away, no call. Here's Okalaja in transition. Got to the basket and laid it in. Seven points. In front of Weed, too. Weed had a chance to make a play on it and didn't want to take a chance on stepping on a foot. Six point. 31-24, rather. North Carolina leading Louisville. In the corner, B.J. Flynn. Eventually, Flynn is going to have to look at a shot from the perimeter. Otherwise, they put that's a hard shot when a guy has a bad foot because he doesn't have the lift. I mean, you got to get after the defensive. Schwicker gets this one in. He's just a big body looking for the foul as Dantzler. And then going back to the other end, you see Wheat make the dive for it. Doesn't get to it. Okalaja gets the finish. Louisville pick it up full court. They, I don't, they can't exert much pressure with Wheat in the game. I don't think Denny wants to take a chance that he turns his ankle, even though they may be up in pressure. Coda, Shaman Williams in the backcourt, Vince Carter, Zwicker, Okalaja in the front court for North Carolina. Here's Zwicker posting up. Jump foot, buried it. And that's what Carolina really would like to do. Throw it inside. There's no height on the side of the Louisville team. Quickness to the ball, but no height. Zwicker, the tallest player ever at North Carolina, 7-2. Here's Sims from downtown. Carter got a hand on it. They try to pitch it back out. And Carter steps in and comes up with the steal. And a foul called on Alvin Sims. You've got height on your side, as Dean Smith does. You do what you can to take advantage of it. You get the ball inside the Zwicker. You can see there's one-on-one, -on -one, no chance to stop that. Zwicker has become very good getting the ball, keeping it high, and putting it down. Largest lead of the game for the Tar Heels, 33-24. 5.46 to play. Louisville has to get active and get stops. And that's what they, they move the offense up. North Carolina is known for that. Move the offense up if you, if you think there's some anticipation and back cut. 35-24. This is desperately close to being a, a situation that I think Louisville has a tough time to get back from. That's why they need him to shoot shots. They, they need to get some threes going. That's B.J. Flynn, senior from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Mike Flynn, his father, played at Kentucky. Here's Williams. Left the air and got it to Carter. And Vince Carter laid it in. Under five to go, 37-27, Carolina. 
Dean Smith trying to advance to his 11th final four. This zone defense is the forced jump shots. And we decided to get it in. So what you see, and every time they tried to penetrate, they've really struggled because they don't have the outside shooting threat of Wheat. And a whistle and foul. This will go against Tony Williams, the freshman from Louisville. North Carolina is a team that does a good job reading back cuts. That time they get one, and Shaman goes to get it. But passing has always been their forte. Vince Carter is a guy that tries to get a little position in here, and the defense comes out to help both players leave, leaving Carter for the easy basket. I mean, this, is, this team started out, remember, this team was 0-3 at the beginning of the season. I mean, they were they lost to Duke at the last game of the season. Uh, of January since then they have won they have melded together mostly because they've gotten good play from people like Jamison Ed Cota particularly has been strong for the Carolina Tar Heels and his ability to run the show Williams can go to the two guard 39 27 Williams in the game for Louisville the freshman and the Carolina fans getting on their feet under five to go, 39-27 to score. Two-three zone being applied, and here's another turnover. Coda got it ahead. Williams straight to the basket, lays it in the hoop, and the foul. that's been in the game. He did this same thing on Friday. He makes a turnover, but here's where he compounds the problem. As you see, Williams push it up. Shaman Williams push it up quickly. Tony Williams gets there late and gets called for the foul. You can't have that with guys coming off the bench. And so Denny Crum has had to make some decisions here. He wants to give guys minutes, but you can't turn it over off the bench. 12 points for Shaman Williams. 41-27. Johnson inside. Sanders underneath. No call. Loose ball picked up. Dantzler gathers himself and draws the foul. Uh, that was one heck of a play because Sanders was on the floor as Dantzler came up with it trying to get it over -served. I mean, he had his legs straddled over uh, 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 Sanders, so I didn't think he was going to have enough lift. Damian Dantzler, junior from Chicago, Illinois. It's the first free throw, and near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. So Dantzler making the second free throw, 3.57 to play. It's all Carolina. And the game summary. North Carolina shooting 62%, but look at the backcourt scoring. 27 to 11 in favor of the Tar Heels. Shaman Williams, Vince Carter, Eddie Cota really doing a great job putting the ball in the basket. Well, they've also gotten some inside play from Vince Carter, but they got 16 points to the eight for Louisville. And, and that's been a part of the problem. They haven't been able to pick up any scoring. Has Louisville. Well, you expected Sims to step up. He's two for six with only five points. He's got to give some more output. Coda, double team. They skip it. Williams on the right wing. Inside. Nice look to Jamison on the give and go. I, I don't think there's enough credit given to North Carolina and their ability not only to find the open man, but to execute the pass just as it needs to be. That was soft enough so it could be caught, put in the basket. Antoine Jamison, sophomore from Charlotte. He's not 100%, suffering from a stiff back. Wheat, his shot off the mark. Cota straight to the basket, used his body, got the left hand up, and sank the basket. That's a tough play to make. Dakota was very confident from the time he started dribbling at full speed, left hand. Sims, hesitation, shut down by Carter. 45-29, 3.05 to go. Sanders, face the basket. The zone is taking away all of the angles or even the attempt to get angles and split the defense. Louisville just isn't doing that now. Sims will fire. His shot off the side of the rim. Four shooting right now for Louisville. A lead pass. Jamison. And see, Sims is the guy back. 
and they run to his backside, and the guys get out. Both Carter will get out and run. Martin Williams will get out and run, and as will Jameson. I mean, at some point, and this is what I was was concerned about, and Denny Crum has made the decision, as you take a look at what Alvin Sims has today, to take DeJuan Weed out of the game, because he, he really wasn't giving the team anything. The last three shots he's taken have been short, which means he doesn't have enough energy or strength in that foot to get a good shot off. Antoine Jamison at the line, five points coming off that 21.8 rebound outing against Cal. North Carolina with their biggest lead of the game, 47-29. And they are shooting 64, 64% from the field, 18 of 28. They've been able to get it where they want, but you feel for a guy like Dewan Week does. Here's the time his senior gets a chance to help his team go to the final four, and he unfortunately, like happens periodically, has gotten hurt, and he basically can't help his team. And a turnover ahead. Eddie Coda straight to the basket, and he'll go to the line. Oh, that's a tough call there because Alvin Sims tried to jump away, and Eddie Coda tried to draw the foul, but Sims just picked up his third. So that's the bigger problem is that the turnover has been leading to fast break opportunities. Good reach inside there by Shimon Williams, and he throws it up to Ed Co Watch this. The Fisher's happened to just be in a position that blocked him. He makes the call. Sims picks up his third, but he's still in the game. Well, Eddie Cota nails the first free throw, and Antoine Jameson, we told you about his stiff lower back moments ago he walked off the floor into the locker room but right now North Carolina they can play the last 216 without him 49-29 Flynn Dantzler looking backside here's Johnson on the baseline and Eddie Cota with the rebound here's Williams Three on two. He'll force one out. And he can't get the roll. Sims the other way. Sanders behind the three-point line and just a lid on the rim right now for Louisville. Well, as much as, as a lid on the rim, they're shooting jump shots. One of the reasons that their percentage can be reasonable, and sometimes it's like 45%, is that Louisville chases down shots after they miss them. Dean Smith's club, the Tar Heels, are not letting them get offensive rebounds to put back in the basket because that's really where they get a majority of their offense. For North Carolina, they've outscored them 20 to 5 in the last four minutes and 20 seconds. Nate Johnson at the free throw line. Let's check in with Andrea Joyce. All right, Gus, Antoine Jameson did indeed aggravate his back when he got knocked down a few minutes ago. He is in the locker room. They're going to have him lie down until the end of the half, and then they'll take a closer look at him at halftime. Back to you guys. All right, Andrea. Second free throw by Johnson. He has eight points now, 49-31, 1.36 to play, first half. As you might imagine, with Jamison's back, they, they won't, there's no real need to have him back in here in the first half, so I'm sure they'll just let him rest. And if need be, they may try to hold him out even in the second half. And Shamond Williams really burning it up from downtown, 15 points. And as I talked to Jamon yesterday, you and I talked to Shamond, we asked him, was he ready? And you could see he was bouncing on his toes even yesterday in anticipation of being prepared to play in this afternoon's game. He's three of three from the three-point line. North Carolina, five of six from long range. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Pat O'Brien, George Rivalry, Coach Krzyzewski, Clark Kellogg, all in the studio. They will be taking a look at the Providence Friars. Uh, I'm sure at some point they've already had a conversation about the both UCLA. I mean, Minnesota, the UCLA game in Minnesota. With Minnesota won. And then Kentucky, who just, whew, I mean, they get playing and their energy starts flowing. You're talking about some really solid teams that already have made it to Indianapolis. So Eddie Cota picking up the foul. His second, 17th foul called against 
the Tar Heels. So Nate Johnson stepping to the free throw line with eight points in the first half. Team down 52 to 31. On a great Tony Williams. Tony Williams entering the game. Alvin Sims. Yeah, the Sims, Sims has three fouls, and, and Denny Crum actually probably he got away with a little bit of a, without getting burned there with having three fouls on Sims. But Sims has got to come prepared to give some offense in the second half. Because Carolina has defended him very well here in the first half. And there's Serge Wicker, the back of his sneakers. One-way ticket to Indianapolis in the Final Four. Now, now, Gus, we talked about the, the neuroscientists and the psychological aspect. But that's another form of it by putting that uh, Indianapolis or Indy on the back of the shoe, which is wicked. It's kind of establishing your mind where you want to go and then prepare yourself to do it. But I don't think anybody thought after the first three games of the ACC that Carolina would be in a position to do what they're doing this afternoon. North Carolina, the last time they lost a basketball game, January 11th to Virginia, 63 points they scored, 75-63 final score. And they are rolling today, under 10 seconds to go. Inside, Dantzler. Johnson on the baseline, rattles out, tip will go. Dantzler again. And that is the end of the first half. Big games for Williams and Carter. They have a combined 28 points. 50 need to make to slow them down. <laughs> well, we just got to do a better job getting back in our defensive transition. We obviously got to guard them better. We're not doing a good job with our switching. And, and they're getting guys wide open. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, it, the guys uh, seem to be in a fog out there. But maybe uh, they'll come out this half and... Uh, give better effort uh, without Dewan. I think that kind of let him down when he didn't wasn't able to perform I think that kind of hurt him psychologically so we got we just have to step it up and play without him okay coach good luck in the second half thanks Dewan Wheat in the first half one of five three points in 15 minutes I, I think what Denny Crum will do is try to read pretty quickly what he needs to do with Dewan you got a senior here in the game that you know obviously means a lot but you don't want to take away his opportunity to get some things done but this is a second half team you take a look to see if you can help the club lead him in if you can't then you got to go in another direction Alvin Sims going off the glass as he hits his first shot of the second half seven points now for Alvin and Quinn you talked about this being a second half team as we get a whistle and foul inside Louisville um, during the tournament in the first half they've been very sluggish shooting 37 percent in the first three games and in the second half, however, they've been shooting 51% in the second half in the first three games of the NCAA. So this usually is the time they start to really turn it up. Yeah, because they'll have a good talk, as they did, I'm sure, at half with Denny Plum. The first problem was defensively they weren't getting back. They weren't doing a very good job. I thought pressuring, coming up with steals, and when they do that, they get some transition baskets, and that makes your numbers go up from a percentage basis. So if they were going to have any chance here, that's the way they have to approach the second half, much like they did against Texas. Here's Wheat around the screen, let it go, and buried it. And he's got to shoot it with that kind of confidence. That one was a little more lift. I was worried coming out of the, the half whether or not he'd have any strength at all. Wheat on the season, averaging 18 points per game. First team all-conference USA. Second all-time leading scorer at Louisville. Carter, pump fake. Bounce pass to Zwicker, and he can't hold on to it. And the stats from the first half of play, Carolina just doing everything right, five and six from the three-point line. Their backcourt outscoring Louisville 35 to 11 and 20 to eight inside. The other thing they got, Gus, of the 11 turnovers that Louisville had, there were nine steals by North Carolina, and that's how you help your percentage coming up because you get fast breaks going the other way. Louisville had a five-point lead at one time, 15-10, but Carolina went on a 12-0 run, and that's been the difference. Here's we. Short, tipped up and in by Dantzler. A little bit of the difference is aggressiveness. Ball's going to the basket, defense collapsed. You get guys to get out of position, that's how they get the tap. Need to see more of it on this end, though. I think this is the real key end for Louisville to have any chance to beat North Carolina. And a whistle and foul on the floor. Wheat picks up the foul. And once again, the difference is 
for Louisville between the first and the second half, shooting the basketball. Inside, Okalija got it again. Second chance, makes him pay. Yeah, North Carolina's been getting those kind of chances, so their numbers are going up. Nine points now for the sophomore from Berlin. Kind of a soft man-to-man -man defense being played to try to uh, combat a little bit. Actually, they've gone all the way zone as North Carolina because they normally have the point guard uh, change the defense after the score. They've gone zone, and I would stay with it as much as I could if I'm North Carolina against this team. Sanders now with 10 points. Williams the other way. Rims out. Rebound. Jamison up. No whistle. Scramble for the ball. Sims picks it up. Louisville with numbers. Sanders inside. Tipped up and in. Sanders. Some good defensive pressure. He missed it, but that's what you do. You push it up. 57-44. Louisville with some momentum coming out of the locker room. Well, they not only have momentum, I think more importantly, as Denny Crum said, they've got energy. They're playing with much more energy than they did throughout the first half. 11-3 run right now for the Cardinals. With Elijah lobbed inside. Jamison. Zwicker. What a nice job of keeping it high. You're, you're, you're taller than the group. Don't bring it down to them, and that's what Zwicker did. He kept it up. Little guys couldn't take it out. So Serge Zwicker. With nine points, 59-44. He's also got five rebounds. It's Johnson around the screen, and he buried the 15-footer. You can see offense is a lot smoother. Ball. They come out of they, they're really getting good shots now, and they're getting them in rhythm, which I think a bad shooting team needs to get shots in rhythm because they, those players are just more comfortable doing that. With Elijah hard to the basket, and he draws the bump. Sims will pick up foul number four. And Sims takes a seat with 16.20 to go here in the second half of play. He leaves with nine points. Well, I didn't, he had not been quite as aggressive as I think you would like to see him from the Louisville, Louisville perspective. But now the bench, which I didn't think gave him anything or anything of note in the first half, has got to come through. B.J. Flynn back in the game as well as Eric Johnson, Williams, and we'll get a foul. Serge Zwicker setting the screen, and he picks up his second. And for North Carolina, Antoine Jameson back in the game. The last time we saw him, he was leaving, heading to the locker room with about 2.15 to go in the first half of play. That stiff lower back giving him problems. Damon's got to test him. If a guy goes in and you know that he's going in, you've got to put him to the test, take the ball to the basket to see can he recover. Johnson almost traveled. Had it rejected by Carter. Great defensive play by Vince Carter. Rejected the basketball and got the rebound. Yeah, it was a solid play to be able to do both. Lobbed inside. And a whistle. You've got to jump ball. You've got to have good quickness, anticipation here. Here's a block in a treat. The engineers of the Pontiac. Eddie Cota's high school basketball coach, a very influential figure in Eddie's life. And his parents were involved in an automobile accident in Panama when Eddie was growing up. And his father paralyzed because of the accident. His mother also seriously injured. Eddie, at that particular time in his life, was very distraught, decided that he was thinking about turning to street life. Rock took him in at Tilden, got him on the basketball team, made him improve his grades, and then eventually sent him to play for Jerry Quinn at St. Thomas More Prep School in Connecticut. And the rest, as they say, is history. Eddie Cote, a really positive, positive freshman for North Carolina. And has been really good for them of late, as, as I said earlier in the game, because and what he seemed to do is he, he settled down. He knew that he could get things going offensively. What they've got him to do at North Carolina is to be a lot more defensive-minded. He plays the game with a positive thought in terms of making passes, helping his teammates, and he settled them down in their last game. He was the one that said, guys, let's move the ball like we did early in the year. 
59-46. Wild pass again, too strong. Carter comes down hard, and he's hurt at the other end of the floor. Well, he's down, but it's like one of those playground plays. You get bumped a little bit, not getting a lob. You may go down for a second, but you get back up and get in the game. Meanwhile, Sanders nails the jump shot on the baseline. 12 points for him. 59-48. Louisville on a 15-5 run to open the second half. Trying to claw their way back into this game. Serves Wicker. Tipped up. Saved. And Vince Carter comes up with the save. Williams. Bounds. And we'll get a whistle and foul on Jameson. They call it on Jameson. I mean, Carter comes and gets it. And then I thought it was on the other side. And Dean Smith thought so, too. I thought it was Dantzler right here. You see that? Well, that's the lob right there that Vince Carter just misses. When they go down and score, they come back the other way, and Carter tried to make a save on a loose ball and threw it in the air. It comes back, and it's the Cardinals' ball. So a basket here. They get the Cardinals inside, 10 points. Here's Dantzler squaring up. Well, they've got the offensive ball going. Now they've got to get it more going on the defensive end. We told you, this is a second-half team, and here come the Cardinals. A trail by as many as 21. Nine-point deficit now. Back door. And a turnover. B.J. Flynn. And he quickly called a timeout. Takes a 20-second timeout, but what, what, what the Cardinals are still being exposed to is they, they're starting to overplay, and on two occasions, they have almost gotten burned. What you've got to do in that circumstance is force the man out, let him catch the ball under duress, but you don't want to give up an easy basket going the other way. Louisville's the team that likes to get out and be active on plays, but you get Dan sort of standing out with Schwicker, who normally likes to protect the paint, getting a jump shot but here's the effort by Carter we talked about he throws it in the air it goes back I mean he goes over the table tries to get some help from some of the other spectators here writers if you will but he just goes down he got back up and was okay 14-02 to play here in the second half Louisville 8-1 against top 25 teams this season. The 35 second is, is, is blinking in and out. That's what the holdup is. So right now the officials have gone to the desk and we have had problems with the shot clock the entire weekend right now. They, they held it for, it's on 34, they held it for a second and then started it to give them the full 35 seconds. Looks like it's okay now. Here's a zone by North Carolina. We left his feet. Well, this is what gave Louisville problems in the uh, first half, and that's why I was anxious to see when North Carolina came back with it because of the lack of uh, uh, shooting ability, particularly from the outside with Louisville. 15 to go on the shot clock. DeJuan Wee has gone virtually the entire distance with the bad ankle. Sanders. Dantzler squares up again and got it! Oh, Dantzler, and you can see Serge Schwicker look a little confused and over at the bench because he has to make a decision whether to get out a little further, which should open up the middle for the Cardinals if they take it to the basket. And you can see the confidence starting to grow for Louisville. Dantzler can get the ball and watch Serge Schwicker. He gets the ball from the pass from Sanders to Dantzler, and Serge didn't know whether to come out or not, and then he has, it, see, he has that, that concerned look on his face, like, what do I do next? Inside Okalaja. 61-52 now. Adimola Okalaja, 11 points. So he, he's kind of the quiet assassin on the team, I think. He gets some baskets. He'll make three-point shots. Here's Reed off the screen. Inside, Dantzler tried to get a hand on it, but couldn't scoop it up. But what was more amazing was Dantzler was the one that came out to set the pick and was able to get back and almost get it put down. Carolina, Coda, got inside. And drew the foul. So the final four bracket, all set for Indianapolis. Two teams already in. Uh, how about Minnesota? 
how about the game they play against UCLA where they just come in solid off the bench. Charles Thomas comes in, Quincy Lewis. They just kept getting it and getting it, and they eventually just wore the Bruins down. And I thought just did a magnificent job of coming back and just being very aggressive. Four fouls on Nate Johnson, and we'll get another foul called against Louisville. That's Alex Sanders. He picks up his first. And back in the game now for the Cardinals, Alvin Sims and Tony Williams. Sims playing with four fouls. Already, North Carolina is in the bonus with 12. 24 to go here. This is obviously something that you'd like to get done, particularly when a team is making a run because you stop the game, obviously, to having to take foul shots. Hopefully, you can put them in for your team. Zwicker gives Carolina once again a 10 point lead. They'll get the second. 63 52. In the zone, they point it up a little bit more. Serge will just kind of stay inside, patrol the middle. So I think if you get it in the middle and Serge Swicker, you've got to put it on the ground and make him move out of it. 13 on the shot clock. 12 minutes remaining here. The East Regional. Final. Plan. So we'll go with four to shoot. Left hander. Drew Iron. Good play. Fouls. Great play by Alvin Sims. He thought the ball was going to go out of bounds, and it hit the rim. So that's that's a good play. 11 minutes, 47 seconds to go here in the second half. Louisville still trying to hang tough. Mike Wallace. Man. Think about you know the things that they're trying to get done here. You're looking at since 90, 1993, Michigan was a number six seed, and they tried to do, they got in the final four. That's exactly what Louisville's trying to do with a guy on a bad ankle. Now they're making three-point shots. They're making themselves being heard here in the second half. Tony Williams, a freshman with the three, and he gets the rebound prior to that three-pointer. He was three of 20 on the season. Gotta go with it. Here's Fred, winding up and getting it to fall. Because that's a rhythm shot for you. And you, if you're a shooter, you can get it in your rhythm. You gotta go with it. 63-58. Louisville, they've trailed by 21 at one time. 11 minutes and four seconds to go. Jamison. They go to their horse. Throw it, just throw it up near the basket and let him go get it. Louisville shooting 69% this half. Dwan Wheat rebounded by Flynn. They've got him wide open. He's wide open. They just missed him. There's B.J. Flynn. And almost too much time to look at. That's why you, you want to, when you're shooting, you're struggling. You kind of like to get it in a rhythm. Coda hesitation, got to the hole, and is fouled. You've got to get someone to step up when you're hurt. B.J. Flynn has to do it, I think, for the Cardinals. He gets there in position and takes a good shot from Jamison. The official doesn't make the call, but he gets back on the other end. Watch, this is a rhythm shot. He just steps right into it. Eyes, good concentration, follow through, and drills a three for the Cardinals. And I think he's got to get some more. The problem that he's, he's dealing with is the one we can't break the defense down, so they have to come and help and then recover to B.J. Flynn. That's where I think Louisville's really got a, a tough time to go here. Eddie Cota at the free throw line, and he gets one out of two. Seven points, six assists for Eddie Cota. He led the ACC in assists this season with 6.9 per game, eighth in the country. Here's Wheat again. And you would say, why is Wheat in the game? Wheat's in the game for the most part because he's the best ball handler, and they would prefer to have B.J. Flynn roaming as opposed to trying to handle the ball. We'll get it back, 10 on the shot clock. Williams again. Rebound inside. Dancer up strong. Can't get it to fall. Flynn down top. Oh, set up and fire, young fella. Nine points for B.J. Louisville right back in this basketball game. Baseline, Jamison again, and the foul. Antoine Jamison. 
Well, you need points. Need aggressive play. You get it from Jamison. But Flynn comes in and gets a, a rebound after this where Serge Swicker forces the miss. The ball comes out to Flynn, and he stands back, gets a chance to light it up, and it knocks the three-pointer right down. D.J. Flynn shooting 38% from the three-point line on the season. Here's Jamison trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. Does with any All-American, second-team All-American off the baseline, and his quickness came about. Carolina up 69-61, under 10 to go. Wheat waves away B.J. Flynn. Tony Williams putting it on the deck, and the freshman draws a foul. Vince Carter. Now, that's interesting. They ran a play. That play was run for Tony Williams. They had cleared out the whole left side so he could try to take advantage of it. And the good part for North Carolina with under 10 minutes to go. That's only the third team foul, so no, no penalty here. Nowhere near close. Nine against Louisville, however. One more. Carolina will be in the double bonus. Here's Dantzler exploding to the bucket, but he's called for the offensive foul. Solid play as Dantzler picks up his third, but Jamison does what, what needs to be done. He comes and steps to help out. You got Schwicker out. You got to get there. They said that Jamison was there, feet planted, facing. Called offensive foul. Got to know if they get a chance, they want to get it back down to Jamison. Shamon Williams. Here's Wicker. He'll take that shot. Sanders had a hand on it. Tipped out. B.J. Flynn with the recovery. Tried to force it to Jamison. Nowhere to go. B.J. Jump stop and a foul. And a bad decision. Bad foul. Nowhere. The player's not going anywhere. He's picked up his dribble. You don't want to reach in. Shimon Williams with his third. With his first. foul called against North Carolina. Shamond Williams with his first. He'll take a seat. Inside, Sanders and the foul. Boy, I tell you, North Carolina just fell asleep. That's a nice pass over the top. 14 points for Alex Sanders. Well, he fronted him. He's fronted by Jamison, and the help from the weak side doesn't get there. It's Vince Carter, but the look was from the out of bounds. When you look at it from the out of bounds, nobody's there. Antoine Jamison picking up his third. Alex Sanders, free throw won't go, knocked out of bounds. Hey, Sands, last touch by the Tar Heels. All kind of breakdowns happening in favor of the Cardinals. The blockout doesn't happen, and that time it goes off of Jamison, and the officials are right there. Another chance for the card. Six-point lead for North Carolina. Louisville their way back their best player has a bum ankle two of their starters with four fouls bj flynn oh, oh my goodness and he runs over to nate johnson on the side and says yeah boy carter the other way left his feet and vince carter answering but louisville four for five from the three-point line North Carolina did a very good thing. When a guy makes a shot, and if there's any sense of celebration, you push it up, and that was a good job by North Carolina getting himself back in the flow. Tony Williams. Oh. Inside, and we'll get a bump. B.J. Flynn. He's got 12 points. He's four for five from the three-point line. Well, we talked about people coming through. B.J. Flynn is the guy that mostly was going to do the ball handling. But you see him make, I think, a tough, tough pass. But because he throws it in, the defense didn't get out in time. And standing there was Vince Carter. And Vince Carter has to come and clamp down on the guy making it. You can see the enthusiasm by the Cardinals' bench. Misses the free throw, and Alvin Sims returns. DeWan Weed will take a seat. Vince Carter has 15 points. And he'll get the second. Seven minutes, 38 seconds to go. North Carolina. And the game summary. In this half, Louisville 
58%. We told you they are a second-half team. They've been shooting 51% in the second half in the first three games here in the NCAA. B.J. Flynn starting to light it up. North Carolina the Cardinals with a little bit of a trap. Sanders pulls up. You see, now that they've taken wheat out of the game, B.J. Flynn is going to have the ball a little bit more. I'd be anxious to see how they, what they do with Sims. Sims right now running the baseline. Dantzler posting up on Zwicker. Here's Flynn. Tony Williams in the corner. Shot clock is down to nine. Sims has to make something happen. Crosses over. Finds Williams. Holds it up by. Scramble for the ball. And Louisville with the possession arrow. They will hold on. Gets a shot to Tony Williams and takes it probably a little quick and the ball comes to Sanders, drops down, and then you see Serge Schwicker wisely try to make sure he ties up Sanders on the floor. Antoine Jameson back in the basketball game. 72-66. Here's Sanders inside. Too strong. Vince Carter with the rebound and he's fouled. The play is still made by Serge, Serge Schwicker quicker because he didn't have to jump so I mean he doesn't, he doesn't get tired you know I said this before seven three doesn't shrink because it gets tired and because he's in there getting his hands on the ball it doesn't allow Louisville to get the ball quickly and put it back in so Damian Dantzler picking up his fourth foul and Louisville now with three starters in foul trouble and Tony Williams the freshman with three Vince Carter, 17 points now. Really stepping up big for the Tar Heels. Just what, what Denny would like to do here is if he can get it, even the next two minutes and try to keep it below 10, he wants to get DeJuan Wheat back in the game because Alvin Sims doesn't see the court quite the way, nor does Sims present the same threat as Wheat and leaving B.J. Flynn open, who was one of the players, obviously, that got Louisville back in good position here. Sims inside, almost threw it away. Nate Johnson off the glass, rims out, knocks out of bounds, and last touch by Louisville. Cardinals have missed their last five shots. Now, don't forget, coming up next, the Southeast Regional Final, Providence in Arizona. Five o'clock tip-off time. Got another number 10 seed and a 14 seed. I mean, you, you look at how the tournament has played out. One of the things that I've liked about it is that you can, though the seeds stand up, as a rule, there's always somebody that sneaks in that you don't anticipate. And I like that mystic mystical part of the tournament. It's not a lot because you're number one. Jamison, 13 points for him now. Despite playing with the stiff lower back. And it's a 10-point lead once again for North Carolina. They're on a 7-0 run. Well, they've gotten weak back in the game. Now DJ Flynn has got to find, find some gaps. Dantzler. No way. Shaman Williams stepping in, coming up with the steal. Here come the Tar Heels. Williams spots up behind the three-point line. Rebounded by Dantzler. Wheat noticeably limping on that leg now. Yeah, he really doesn't have any, any way to push off. And he created this foul by Shaman Williams here to B.J. Flynn. But Wheat doesn't have the strength because normally he'd have run out in front and gotten himself a layup. He was just fortunate to get down court. Second foul on Shimon Williams. 7-0 run, last two minutes and 30 seconds. As Okalaja comes back in the game for his wicker. This is a good move, I think, by Dean Smith. What he does here is he brings in Okalaja, so the front line is Vince Carter, Okalaja, and Jamison, so he's got offense at all three positions. Tony Williams, baseline, Carter with the board. 37 to play. North Carolina trying to advance to the Final Four for the 11th time under Dean Smith. Eddie Coda winding up. Long rebound goes to Wheat. They've got to find they got to get open for, for Juan Wheat because he, he really can't do anything. They haven't made 
in seven trips down, they haven't made shots. Here's Wheat, 14 on the shot clock. He'll let it go, come up short. Johnson picks it up. B.J. Flynn, open look in the corner, rattles out. You know, the run they made a moment ago, I said to you, even in the timeout, I knew they would make another run. The question was not whether or not it'd be enough. And it looks like they're really struggling to get the, to grab themselves, regroup, and really get things going again. But you got to credit Carolina for that, too, because they played well in taking that blow. 33 points attempts for Louisville. Shaman Williams, and he doesn't miss too often. Eighteen points for Shaman. Four threes and a timeout on the floor. Called by Louisville. With 416 remaining. Well, if North Carolina is a team that can get you a lot of ways. You throw it inside to Vince Carter, who has been tough to guard, but Shaman Williams is a guy you've got to get out and cover. If you don't, he can just drill the three. And because of what happened earlier with the run with Louisville, you see the bench feeling pretty good about their position up 13 with 416. North Carolina going after their fourth NCAA Final Four appearance in the 90s. They've gone each year during odd years here in the 90s. Leading it right now, 79-66. Odd years in the 90s, Carolina, they've been automatic. Winning the championship over Michigan in 93. So on the floor right now for Louisville, Nate Johnson will throw it in bounds with Wheat, Flynn in the backcourt, Sims also in the backcourt for Louisville, and Alex Sanders, Eddie Cota, Shaman Williams, Vince Carter, Zwicker, and Jameson for the Tar Heels. Should Carolina continue to go as they are and they get to the Final Four, this will be the 11th for Dean Smith, which will put him right behind John Wooden, who's at the top of Final Four appearances with 12. Here's Coda. Back it out. Look inside. Jameson, great catch! And that's why he's a second-team All-American. Th that is a big-time catch, Gus, because the ball was behind him, almost behind his head, and he caught it and was able to control it and get the basket. 3.43 to go. 81-66. Almost a steal by Coda. Here's Sanders. Got it. Sanders is going to make that shot. You don't know if he should be out there shooting it, but he's very comfortable out there. That ends a 12-0 run for North Carolina. Sanders with 17. He had 17 against Texas as well. Gus, this is, this is the 90s version of the four corners. Carolina wisely is going to use as much time as they can. They're looking at 20 on the shot clock, and then they can always go inside. Jamerson can get them something, as well as Vince Carter can break you down. Williams had it stripped. Hung on to it. Cota crossing over. In deep, but nice play by the freshman from Brooklyn. Again, broke him down, likes to go left, and then makes this steal. It's Cota to get the hand on him. Here's Williams rejected. But Cota right there for the loose chain. Eleven points for Eddie Cota. And North Carolina. They extend their lead up 85-69. 2.41 to go. 5.69, 2.41 to go. That's Dr. Linnea Smith, the wife of Coach Smith on the left, and his daughter Kristen on the right, high school student. And when you talk about Coach Smith, you have to tell the story about when Chancellor William Acock hired him in June of 1961, he gave them one objective, and that was to give North Carolina a program that they could really be proud of. And as this team prepares to go to its 11th Final Four under Coach Smith, I think Chancellor Acock, uh, mission accomplished by Coach Smith. Well, they've won the most, he's won more games than anybody in college basketball, so obviously he's done an outstanding job, and having played for him in the Olympic team, Coach Smith is somebody that you, you have to feel good about because he handles, you know, difficult situations. We had a bunch of superstars, if you will, on that team. And what he was able to do was smooth the egos, get everybody to play together on what they said was an undersized team. 
and so we went on to win the gold medal so I, I really enjoyed playing for coach Smith so Shaman Williams with 18 points so far at the free throw line as North Carolina leads it 85-69 and Williams shooting 81% from the free throw line got the first and our tournament summary Minnesota 16,000 fans greeted them last night when they returned to Minneapolis as Quinn Buckner told me and Providence a number 10 seed trying to advance to the final four Gus, there's never been a number 10 seed do that, so they would be the first if they can pull that off. Air ball by Dantzler. Louisville, they were down 21 at halftime. Storm back. Got as close as three. 69-66, but since then, Carolina on an 18-3 run. I tell you when it really turned, when they, when B.J. Flynn shot the three-pointer in the corner, because a guard is in the corner and flattened out, he makes the shot, makes the shot, but they push it back up with Vince Carter and get an easy basket, and from there on, there was not much Denny Crum's team could really do to get it going back in their direction. Denny Crum came into this game 6-0 in regional title games. And another look at the final four bracket. Minnesota, Kentucky already there. North Carolina will advance. And we are still awaiting the winner of Providence, Arizona. That game coming up next. When you look at, you know, you try to figure out how it's going to go with uh, Kentucky and Minnesota. They've got six common opponents. And instead of naming them, Alabama, Clemson, Purdue, Indiana, Ohio State, and Iowa. Kentucky beat them by plus 18. Minnesota beat them by plus nine. I mean, it, that's that's a little early, and it's, it's just one of, uh, another way to look at what the possibilities are. But you have to play the game, and I tell you, Minnesota played it strong. But Kentucky, without you know Derek Anderson this year, losing four players to the pros, and going without Allen Edwards, did an outstanding job yesterday. Jamison with the rebound, lead pass, big serve. <laughs> <laughs> the big Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Serge almost took off too early, and the bitch is just cracking up at him. I don't know how Serge snuck down the floor unnoticed, but he did, and he gives Carolina a 91-69 lead. We got Serge is sneaking. Come on, Serge. Come on, big fella. You can get there. Almost took off too early, but stressed it in. <laughs> the snapback rim helped him a little bit, too. Serge said, I got me one. I got one. Yes. <laughs> oh, you love it for it. I know the guys will be teasing him about that one on the way back to Chapel Hill. So Alvin Sims with 10 points at the free throw line, coming off that career-high 25-point outing. 134 to play between North Carolina and a trip to Indianapolis. So Nate Johnson picking up his fifth foul. He will take a seat with 12 points. The freshman from Camden, part of that great Camden connection. Milt Wagner, Billy Thompson. And, and, and that's really what, what it was about. You look there, Nate Johnson is very, very disappointed. I mean, here's a team in Louisville that at the beginning of the year, they weren't even ranked in the top 25, Gus. No one thought that they had much of a chance to, to meld together as a team, principally because their outside shooting was so suspect. Denny Crum admitted himself, we can't pass, we can't dribble, we can't shoot. But the guys have found ways, and until uh, the day, they have found ways to win games. They ran into a better Carolina team. Started the season 15-1. and one. Subs getting ready to come in for North Carolina. Dean Smith will allow them to step on the floor here at the regional final. So the starters coming out of the lineup. Serge Zwicker, Vince Carter, Shimon Williams, Coda, Antoine Jameson. And here we come, Indianapolis. They were hanging Dane Smith in effigy during the course of the year, and he's got this group going to the Final Four. His group has got to be proud as Dewan Wheat basically looks at his career come to an end here.
Dean Smith, 66 years old, his fourth trip in the 90s. They said when they started 0-3 in the conference that the game was starting to pass Coach Smith by. Well, he must have got on the fast train because he caught up with it again. <laughs> I don't know how it passes a guy up when he's winning as many games as Coach Smith is. And the turning point, the NC State game. They were down by nine with 2.09 remaining. Came back and won the basketball game. Their last loss, January 29th to Duke, 73 to 80. And you see Alvin Sims sit down, the gentleman that's sitting to the right of Dean Smith has been with him just about all of his career at North Carolina, Bill Guthridge. It's been a big part of the Carolina tradition and helping him just work with the players. They spend time with people like Serge Schwicker, extra 10 minutes for the big men. You've got to have that kind of support when you're trying to pull it along. And Bill Guthridge has given all the support and loyalty to the Carolina program and Dean Smith. 31 years at North Carolina is Eftimov. Vasco Eftimov, his father plays professional basketball in Bulgaria had opportunities to go to a number of schools but dad wanted him to play right here at North Carolina to learn from coach Smith a McDonald's All-American as you look at the faces on the bench Nate Johnson been a tremendous year for Louisville. Nobody expected them to get this far. I've been on both sides of this. I lost as a junior in the finals of the regional, and I've won, so I know exactly what he's feeling. I mean, it's an empty feeling, especially when you kind of accomplish some things no one thought you could accomplish as Louisville has done, and then all of a sudden just to see it in one game come to an end. But these young men have something to be proud of for the rest of their career because nobody believed in them but them. The tears starting to pour out now for Louisville. Nothing to be ashamed of. A valiant effort by a team with its best player hampered by an ankle injury. Found ways to win all season. Well, three point attempt by Williams. Well, Gus, as it stands here, this will be the first loss in the regional finals by a Denny Crum coach team. Thirty point six seconds to go. While we were talking about Coach Gustin, the other guy on that bench is not too bad for North Carolina. Phil Ford as an assistant coach, the original Four Corners kind of guy. He's been a big part of what's happened at North Carolina, and I know he's as impressed with what his team has done as anybody. Here's Sullivan. Get it up. Get it up. Eftimov. <laughs> and he fires an air ball. You got a, you got a chance here. You can see Coach Smith is clapping for him. He likes to see guys who work hard for him in practice get a chance at getting some numbers up here in the regional final. So that's we got three out of four. And the last one's to be seen right after this. And that is a ball game. North Carolina under Dean Smith. They are headed to the Final Four in Indianapolis. Coach Smith and his team getting ready to Dean Smith now 11 trips to the Final Four. He's 65 and 26 in NCAA competition. Great Dr. Linnea Smith and their daughter, Christine. And the final four bracket, three teams in, one remaining. Minnesota, Kentucky, North Carolina, and we still await the winner of the Providence-Arizona game. That coming up next right here on CBS. Our most valuable players of the game, B.J. Flynn. 12 points, 4 of 8 from downtown, and Shamond Williams, 22 points and 6 assists.
Our final score, 97-74 for Quinn Buckner on Gus Johnson. Coming up next, Pat O'Brien in New York after this break. All right. All right, Pat, thanks. These guys have been trying to get Dean Smith to dance. I'm no Al McGuire, but you're not going to dance for these guys either, are you? Uh, maybe if we went two more. Uh, but really, uh, Louisville had a great comeback. We played very well in the first half. And then, of course, they have the entry. So I'm real proud of the guys. And I know you want to talk to Vince and some of Well, I wanted to ask you a question, though. What was going through your mind in the second half, though, when B.J. Flynn was tightening it up, hitting those three-pointers? Well, they made the shots. And they didn't like we just let them shoot. And then uh, they foul us and take away the basket. Sure, I said they could come back and win. It's uh, you know, in the end of the world, but I thought we'd come back. If anybody had told you in January that this was a Final Four team, would you have believed them? Uh, no way, but they sure have played a lot of hard today, and I'm very proud of them. Congratulations, Coach. We'll see you in Indianapolis. Vince, your coach has said that you guys have had more confidence in this team at times than he has had, but you also were a little worried about being overconfident. How much did that help you, though, to keep focused today? Well, we just went out there and jumped on them um, quickly and just tried to play as hard as we could and tried not to be too overconfident. I think we did a good job of that, and, and it's, it's, it's played off for the whole year. Providence or Arizona, I'll bet you don't care who you play. Um, we don't mind. Uh, we just want to come out and do the same things we've been doing all year and just play hard and, and be proud of what we've gotten. All right, congratulations. We will see you in Indianapolis, and we will send it back to New York after this short break. Six cylinders, 1,520 cc's. You'll go through towns where you'll be the biggest thing that happens all year. The new Valkyrie Tour. America's the boulevard it was born to cruise. Greg Lambert isn't too worried about how to invest for Zach's college education. That's because he works with a broker from Dean Witt. Together, they developed a long-term investment plan to help take Zach wherever he wants to go.